football always was her love. So the fact that you have footage of her playing it doesn't surprise me one bit. Like, that's her. She was a football fanatic. But when she wasn't playing football, she was watching football. She was into the sport, hook, line, and sinker. She's an athlete. So when she sees other athletes, it resonates with her. There's a resonant feel to how she looks at the world. Now, the little girl who loved football is all grown up, and she's become one of the most well-known sportscasters at ESPN. When you walk in this room, what stands out the most to you of all your memories? Well, you know, if anybody ever wonders if my love of football is genuine or how <laughs> I got into this, all you have to do is, is look at my past. I was one of the first little girls in the country to ever play organized football. Susan Colbert is the only girl on the old boy Upper Dublin Township Junior Athletic Association team. Susan, what makes you want to be a football player? Well, I like the sport and I always wanted to do it. Aren't you afraid you might get hurt? No. Susie Colbert's dreams were short-lived. For whatever reason, kind of know how it is, still yeah. goes on today, the, the parents had a problem with it. Parents are mean. <laughs> they are. There was no reason. There was no reason for it. She loves football. She's very athletic. And uh, if it's something that she wants to do, I think she should get out of her system and do it. Aren't you I afraid don't... she might get hurt? Not any more so than if I had a son in there. It developed into a lawsuit because the parents didn't want her to play. I wanted the boys to have their season, so we stepped back. I never put the helmet on again. And the coaches felt so bad at the time. Nobody got to keep the playbook, but they gave me the playbook. Oh, look at that. So I still have it. Why did you want to play football? It was in my soul. It's hard to explain. That didn't stop Susie from playing sports. And in Florida, she found another way to pursue her passion. When did you know you wanted to be a sports broadcaster? When I was at the University of Miami, I started interning at what was then the CBS affiliate in Miami, and I was interning in the sports department and logging the Stanley Cup finals. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. Like, I could have a job that would have me in sports all the time. After you catch your first UM lacrosse game, you might just get carried away. Susie Culver, Hurricane Sports Watch. But our guest host, Susie produced, Green reported, Green and directed her way to ESPN, where she was hired to help launch ESPN2. Susie started as an original anchor on ESPN2 in 1993. From the moment she was on TV at ESPN, you could just see she was a star. And there's not anybody who cares about their job more than Susie cares about hers. When did you feel that you had earned your position in sports and, and, and really earned the respect of the players and the coaches and got that credibility. I think the big change for me happened with the NFL when I was doing the Edge NFL matchup show and Ron Jaworski and Merrill Hodge were on the show with me and that was hardcore X's and O's mm -hmm. and I was dishing it with those guys. And that Tennessee offense, it was always Eddie George left, Eddie George right. Are they really going multiple sets, empty backfield? You bet they are. And I started to see a change that players and coaches started coming up and talking to me. They knew yep, that, that you knew I what knew what I was talking about, and there was a mutual respect. Congratulations on everything yeah, so we haven't far. done anything yet. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but it's awesome. Do you have a favorite thing that you do? For me, being on the sideline was the most natural thing. Really? The extreme being at the line of scrimmage and feeling the collisions and seeing it, that I think will always be what's really in my soul. And the most important thing to me has always been the relationships. So I still get to see the guys and yeah. see the coaches and interact personally, which I love. After all the time away, what was it like to lose such a dramatic comeback? Well, that's not how we drew it up, but I'll take it. As personable as Susie is throughout her career, she's never been afraid to ask tough questions. Right off the top, Eli, why don't you want to play for the Chargers? Uh, you know, we're not really giving details right now. We just uh, we've made our decision, and that's what we're sticking to. Mike Holmgren arguing with the officials right now as he walks off the field, engaged in a discussion with Bill Levy. Mike, what did all the confusion come from? 
Well, I just, they're telling me upstairs the ball didn't cross the line, and he's telling me he did for the touchdown down there on the replay. Super Bowl 40 at the post party, John Madden said, that's how you do sideline. You couldn't ask for a better Without endorsement. Everything. And we know it has not always been easy. Of course, the moment um, with Joe Namath that you couldn't have been more professional. What does it mean to you now when the team is struggling? I want to kiss you. I couldn't <laughs> care less about the team struggling. Who knew what that was going to turn into? Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to interview me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will never talk about this. Because you didn't want to be the story. I didn't want to be the story, and how do you make something go away? Yeah, stop talking, talking about, about it. it. Hey, Susie, good to see you. You want to catch some punts? Yes. <laughs> Gotta get over here. After nearly 30 years with ESPN, Susie has never stopped talking about football. We'll see you at the top of the hour from Monday Night Countdown. She's had a love affair with that sport for the longest time, and whether she played it, covered it, talked about it. I mean, I can't imagine her not being a part of it. Bug. She's a tremendous teammate. If we look at the seven, she's the quarterback. She can call the play this cool. So are we talking about running backs who can actually do the job? Yes. Yes. All of them, yes. yes. all of the only, only look at it from the standpoint of they're all good at it. Yes. And just focus on that. She's a football player. But I think that's the, what I love about her the most is she's a football player. Set, power. Even today, that's who she is. I think it's super cool. Susie, don't forget to tell those guys that you used to play. Just tell them. Remind them that. They get a little rough. You just hit them right above the knee. That's what we're talking about. Above the knee. That's a good call, coach. Good call, coach. This is a good gig if we can get it, you know? That's awesome. This is probably the second best thing to being on that football field for you as a young I child. I have never taken for granted yep. the access in the spot at the line of scrimmage of being able to be at the games and talk to the people that I get to talk to. I have never taken that for granted for one second. Well, the irony is you're still on the football field, so. Yeah.